Hi, today on X Vintage Tech, we're going to talk about the easiest ways to go from this into this, or this, or this, so that you can use them inside of this, or this, and even this. And thank you for sticking through that award winning cinematography. To get back on topic, what I have here today is my Power Macintosh G3 desktop. I consider it the bridge for most of my vintage computing. Now in the front, as you can see, it's got a zip drive, a DVD-ROM that I upgraded, and a floppy disk drive. Now the floppy drive can also read and write 800K floppies, so when you have to cross the Oregon Trail on your Macintosh SE, you can. And on the back side, it has USB, Firewire 400, Apple Talk, and Ethernet. Ethernet being great, in case you happen to have a NAS that supports the older networking standards, then you'd be able to just keep everything remotely and as you need it, copy it to a floppy for your older Macs. The other great thing about having USB and FireWire on this is that you can take an older external hard drive that happens to have FireWire 400 or 800 or USB or even eSATA in this case and transfer all your files over to here and back and forth as needed. Now this drive is very handy to have as it doesn't require external power. It does support FireWire 800, 400 and USB so that you can basically hook this up to anything except this little guy right here and you'd be able to get all your files transferred fairly easily. Now another thing I find indispensable are zip disks. This particular computer has the zip drive built in. However, if I had an external zip drive that was SCSI, it would work just fine on this Macintosh SE or any other compact Mac that has external SCSI. I also happen to have a USB external zip drive that works just fine on any of my modern PCs. I have tried it on my modern M1 Mac Mini and the transfer speeds are unusably slow. I don't know if it's a driver issue or maybe it just doesn't like zip drive because it doesn't expect me to plug in something that old. That one doesn't quite work, but if you have an older Mac that isn't the M1 series, it'll work just fine. Now what if the files are too big to put onto a zip disk and you don't have an external hard drive that supports FireWire? Well, sometimes you just have to go the old fashioned route and burn a CD. Now it's always good to have a burner in your arsenal in case you happen to come across one of those games that won't run unless you have the disk in the drive. Sometimes you can't image everything. Now the great thing about all this is most of this can be obtained fairly cheap. External hard drives are very cheap on eBay. If you can get brand new floppies and zip drives today still in the sealed packaging, which is amazing. Uh, the failure rate on some of these, like the floppy disks, I get about one failure per 10 to 15 disks. It's to be expected when they start getting this old. Uh, not much can be helped about that, but when you buy in volume, it's not that bad a deal. Now, if you've made it this far through the video, first of all, thank you. But you also might be asking yourself, hey, wasn't he holding up a five and a quarter inch floppy to start all this? Well, yes, yes, I was. The great thing about this is you won't need any of this except a modern computer. Now, what I mean by that is you have your modern computer and you're going to use a program called ADT Pro. Now, what that does is it allows you to transfer data from your modern computer via serial connection to an Apple II platform computer. So what you're going to need for this, in my case, is an Apple IIc and a DB9 to serial connector. So I'm going to take my Apple IIc and connect it to my modern laptop using a DIN5 to DB9 connector. Now you might ask, my modern laptop doesn't have serial. Well, that's where this little guy comes in, a serial DB9 to USB connector. They go for about $15 on Amazon and very easy to get and readily available. Very little to configure and everything just works. There's an entire YouTube video on this done by Alex Electronics and I'm going to link that below as she gets into much more detail than I would be in this short video. The cable is available at 8bitclassics.com as are the floppy disks which you can't just pick up at Staples anymore. I hope you found the information in this video informative as these were many of the questions that I had when I started getting into the hobby of vintage computing. Now, as the phrase goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's plenty of ways to get data to and from these old machines. Two of them being Floppy Emu and Blue Scuzzy. Now, those are two entirely different videos on their own and we might go down that one day, but I just wanted to show what I had on hand currently as they are both easy and economical ways to do this. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you like the content of the video, please consider subscribing. Uh, now, let me know how you transfer data to and from your machines in the comments down below. Thank you very much and take care.